Selwyn, who wins and who loses by the nation hearing about Hone's colour-coded daughter dating system? Oh, it's a hard one to find a winner out of it, isn't it? Perhaps, mm. per, perhaps those who would not have a chance at getting within the Harawira family, maybe. But, um, <laughs> including Hone, he was adopted, remember? Oh, well, yeah, that's another story. But a uh, loser? Oh, I, I suppose all of us have to suffer that kind of talk. <coughs> Cam, who wins and who loses by the nation hearing about Hone's colour-coded daughter dating code? I think we all lose when we get a, a, another utterance from the Human Rights Commission to say that it's OK to say those sorts of things can you, if you just imagine if perhaps Judith Collins said she doesn't want her son coming home with a Maori girlfriend, the outrage that would have poured through the papers and the, and, and the radio stations and talk back, but Hone can get away with well, it. Well, you know, the threshold for freedom of speech is very high, as you well know. Let's, uh, let's wrap the show with last word, Mr Slater. Your last word this week is? My last word is, is about Chris Carter. I find it deeply offensive that he's crying and, and his... Uh, agents that are acting on his behalf, the Brian Edwards, the the uh, Helen Clark in the background, the, the people like that are doing the whispering campaign that he's suffering from mental illness. I, I don't believe that's the case. I know up close and personal uh, how how tough it is to to go through depression, to live with it on a day-to-day -day basis, and I think it's an insult to all people who are struggling and managing to get on with their lives on a day-to-day -day basis that this man with a culture of utter entitlement, is now claiming uh, that he's somehow ill. Last word, uh, Mr. Benning. Well, I think the former Prime Minister of a few months, was it um, Geoffrey Palmer, um, ought to actually have a rethink relating to his role in this UN-led inquiry into the Flotilla Gaza incident. In this sense, that Palmer said that basically New Zealand is seen as some sort of independent, um, objective party that can kind of look at such a thing. Um, I would suggest that Palmer needs to really look at New Zealand's values and actually take a chance here and actually look at this and put some values relating to humanitarian rights and start to weigh those up against what happened there. And perhaps then we would have uh, New Zealand actually meaning something on the world stage. Uh, thank you, Mr. Slater. Thank you, Mr. Manning. Ladies and gentlemen, my final word is the New Zealand involvement in Afghanistan. We are losing this war, and to listen to the Prime Minister of our country justify our continued occupation of Afghanistan because of some ill-defined terrorism to New Zealand is more weapons of imagined destruction than real threat. To have our country hop up and down over the loss of one life when there have been anywhere between 10,000 to 30,000 Afghan civilian deaths puts our supposed flag draped loss into some context. The mainstream media, I think, have done a gutless job of holding this government to account on what we are actually doing in this open-ended war. Embedded journalism isn't scrutiny. The fact seems inescapable that the first U-turn of a 2011 John Key government will be to keep troops in this endless war. The surge in Afghanistan is working as well as the surge in Vietnam did. On next week's Citizen A, editor of Tumeki, Tim Selwyn, returns with special guest Labour Party Auckland MP David Shearer. If you like tonight's show, please check out our Citizen A Facebook site. Thanks for watching, Fano. Good night, out here, though. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.